Okay, welcome back. We have been uh, talking about the derivative. The last time we defined the derivative, we said what it means for a function to be differentiable, which basically means that uh, the, the, a certain uh, uh, limit exists, right? It's a limit of a difference quotient. The difference quotient represents the slope of a secant line. And we say uh, a function is differentiable at a point x if the limiting slope of the secant line actually uh, exists. And uh, we also, last time, talked about a very, very important theorem, which basically uh, is the most important theorem when it comes to derivatives. It connects the value of the function to the value of derivative. And what was the name of that, that theorem? Mean value, mean value theorem. Good. Uh, so today I want to convince you that uh, it's actually um, an important uh, theorem and talk about generalization known as Taylor's theorem. So that's the first part of the lecture. And then the second part of the lecture, I want to discuss um, uh, sequences of functions, which is a different topic. Let me see if I remember how to turn the lights on here. There we go. Great. So um, let me say what Taylor's theorem is. And hopefully you'll see it's actually a generalization of, of of the mean value theorem. So here's a statement of, of Taylor's theorem. Well, uh, actually, let me motivate it a little bit. So the idea is that um, suppose you know something about a function and what it's doing at a particular point. The idea of Taylor's theorem is, well, if you know something of what's happening at a point, you know what's happening near a point if the function is uh, differentiable or twice differentiable or if you have a number of derivatives. So um, in the simplest case, suppose you know something like what the function is doing at a point A. And uh, maybe you know, um, well, let's say suppose you know what's happening at, at A and you want to approximate what's happening uh, near A, let's say f of b. Well, the mean value theorem tells us something about f of b if you know f of a and if you know the derivative nearby. Okay? So the mean value theorem basically says, oh yeah, I can figure out what f of b is if I know f of a and I know something about the derivative nearby. Okay, so this is a restatement of the mean value theorem. And the thing to notice here is that there is a mysterious point C, and all we know about C is that what? It lives between A and B. Okay? Okay, for some C in A and B. Okay. Now, of course, we don't really know, necessarily know, what, what this point is. And so the way to think about this is, I know f of b if I know f of a, and, well, okay, I don't have that much control over this term. This term is something like an error term, right? It tells me how far off f of b is from f of a. It's like an error term. It's not precisely known, necessarily. Often it's not but it has something to do with the derivative nearby. So if I can bound the derivative nearby, then maybe I can actually say something about this error. Okay? That's a way, one way to think about the, the mean value theorem. So this actually suggests that I might be able to do better with my approximation if I look at, let's say, f of b and f of a. Well, f prime, I don't know what it's doing at c. I don't even know where c is. But what if I knew what the derivative was doing at a? Then maybe I could do better, right? Maybe this suggests that f of b equals f of a plus maybe f prime at a times b minus a. Was it going to be exactly this? No, maybe there's some error. 
another error, hopefully a smaller error term than before. Right? So this is another error. So it suggests that there might be a theorem like this. Right? So here's a question. Is there, can I fill this in suitably? And the answer is, yeah, well, if the function actually has two derivatives, if it's twice differentiable, then in fact, there is a, an expression that will make this an equality, namely the derivative, the second derivative, over 2 uh, times b minus a squared. And this is evaluated at some mysterious point, c. Not the same c as the original, uh, the, the first statement. It's just some c in between a and b. Okay. So, um, yeah, there is a expression. Notice this error term's a little better, because if b minus a is really small, this thing's small. And once again, I have no control over where c is. All I know is that c is somewhere in between a and b. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the, uh, sort of the, the direction that Taylor's theorem goes in. Uh, in it tells gives me some idea of how good this this particular error term is. So what's the moral? The moral of the story is if I know the, the function value and its derivative. And uh, at a point A, and I know what its second derivative is in some neighborhood of A, then I will have a good handle on what f of b is. OK? OK, great. So let me just say more generally, then, what we can say. So more generally, I mean, you could continue this process, right? You could say, oh, wait a minute. This error is kind of like a second derivative. So maybe if I throw in a term like this at a, where c is replaced by a, I'll get still yet a better error term. That's really the direction that um, Taylor's theorem goes into. So suppose I define a, func uh, a polynomial I'll call p sub n minus 1 which is basically, so it's a polynomial in x, and its first term is f of a. Its second term is f prime at a times x minus a. Its third term is the second derivative of a over 2, and that's secretly a 2 factorial. So this is 2 factorial, which is 2, uh, times x minus a squared, plus dot, 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 and let's continue until we get to um, the n minus 1th term. So this is f. The nth derivative is notated with a exponent, but in parentheses, at a over n minus 1 factorial times x minus a to the n minus 1. OK, so here's what I want you to notice. Where do the x's appear here? There's an x here. There's nothing in this term, so it's constant with respect to x. There's an x here. What's in here? An x squared. And there's some x's floating around here, but this is a poly. So the point here is, you see, you have polynomial uh, in x. OK? OK. And what's degree? What's its degree? Good. n minus 1. Very good. Uh, and what's the dependence on a? Well, notice, in order to, to figure out what the coefficients are, this is really polynomial in x minus a. And the coefficients all involve derivatives at a, value and derivatives at a. OK, so this is a polynomial, sometimes called the Taylor polynomial. OK, so here's the content of Taylor's theorem. So Taylor's theorem says, if you have a function, this is a real valued function, 